Now, there are plenty of unexplained details surrounding the flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. To sum up, the plane diverged from its usual flight path. Secondly, it passed directly over a war zone. Finally, according to the airline, Ukrainian air traffic controllers requested that the plane reduce its altitude. The reasons for that remain unclear. Let's cross live now to former CIA officer Ray McGovern for some more analysis. Mr. McGovern, thanks for joining us this hour. Many in the Western media were speculating about the alleged communication supposedly intercepted after the crash between the self-defense commanders. Is it possible to falsify such a conversation? Yes, it is possible, and that's why we should all wait a decent interval. I'll all wait for the facts to come in, because this is the very delicate period where people need to exercise some states, statesmanship and not uh, jump into uh, accusing one another. Even the Chinese have spoken out in favor of restraint here. What's interesting is that President Putin has called for a ceasefire, and this time President Obama agreed. President Obama has called for an international inspection or an international inspection of the crash site, and Mr. Putin agrees. That leaves Mr. Poroshenko out, as we say in the United States, out in left field, meaning out isolated all by himself. He needs to respond as to whether he will, after three weeks of refusing to do so, whether he will agree to a ceasefire and to facilitate the inspection people to come in there and not only monitor the ceasefire, but allow access to the wreckage mm. of the airliner. Now, why could the plane have deviated from its normal route, taking into account other flights heading to the same destination had been bypassing the conflict zone? Well, you know, planes deviate. I'm thinking of KAL 007 back in 1st of September. 1983. That was a, a Korean Airlines jet which strayed off its flight path and crossed over Kamchatka into Siberia and, as you know, it was unfortunately shot down by a Soviet fighter pilot. Now, that was a terrible uh, setback for U.S.-Soviet relations, mostly because Washington chose to exploit this to the hilt, charging with their mantra, uh, the Russians have sh deliberately downed a civilian airliner, killing over 200 people. Well, the deliberate was, was correct. The Soviet fighter pilot, pilot thought that this plane was an intelligence craft which did not heed instructions to cease and desist. He was ordered to shoot it down, thinking that it was one of those RC-123s that have fly, flown out there, and one had just been recently there. But that somehow escaped the propaganda on this side of the ocean, and the Russians were made to look not, not as though it were a mistake, but rather that it was a deliberate killing of civilians. This time, I suspect, and I hope, that President Obama will, will not heed the advice of advisors who want to blacken Mr. Putin and blacken Russia across the board and wait for the results to come in. No one knows exactly what happened. It may be weeks before we do. Okay, so that, we're talking about the deviation there, but also air traffic controllers requested the plane to fly lower than planned. Why, in your opinion, did that happen? You know, I don't have a clue. I'm not technically uh, equipped to answer that question. Okay. Ray McGovern, former CIA officer, we thank you for your time this hour. You're most welcome.